Play me live. When he saw me at his door, he flung it wide, smiled a big smile and pulled me inside, told me sit down and asked how are you. I said I'm fine, I just came to see you. He laughed, turned, called out to his niece, Junior, Junior, come and greet uncle please. And I thought she would be that little girl still, the same one I saw when I was last in town. But the curtains parted, and a vision of beauty came out from inside to come and greet me. Then entered the kitchen to find food and drink. So I turned to my friend and said, Can we talk? Of course we can talk of the regional elections and the riggings and bonnings and killings that followed and of how things are now that we're independent. But I said, No, 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 no. This is much more important. What can it be? So I swallowed some courage and told him I want Junior's hand in marriage. Which Junior he asked? The one that just passed. Yes, I said, That one that just passed. <laughs> and my friend grew silent, completely silent, so silent you could hear the moth and the cricket. My friend was silent, completely silent. Then he sighed and said, well, you have to talk to her first. For she was his niece. Yes, this was true. But her parents had passed when she was just two. He'd raised her himself. She was practically his daughter. We've been friends for so long now, practically his brother. <laughs> so I reached out and touched his arm gently. You know, I'll take care of her. And he looked up at me. Yes, I know you will. But you just like I said, talk to her first. If she agrees, then go ahead. Thank you. So I went to her and said, You've taken my heart. She was startled at first, but I said, No, no, it's the truth. I'm not a man of two minds. I know what I want. In all the towns, in all the world, you are what I want. And she asked, What of that? I've spoken to him. If it's okay with you, it's okay with him. Then she thought for a while and said, But where will we live? And I said, In Lagos, for that's where I live. And in her eyes, I saw the Hamatan breeze, the sandy roots of Zalia, the tamarind trees. And in her eyes, I saw the trauma of distance of leaving her home for far away Lagos. So she said, Uncle, shh. I said, Call me DK. <laughs> DK, what do you want me to say? I was born here, raised here, this is all I know. And she turned away and said, I cannot go. So I fell on both knees and begged like the desperate. I told her that body and soul cannot be separate. If you make me go back a loom, I'll go back a shell. So I fell on both knees and begged like a fool. So she turned and pulled me up into a warm embrace. I said, DK, will everything be okay in that place? And I said, I promise, it will be well with us. And she nodded, okay, I'll follow you to Lagos. And in that moment, the world was a beautiful song. A perfect moment, two hearts beating strong. She tasting my faith, me tasting her fears, as we clung to each other like the last of days. <laughs> At the train station, I said, don't forget that moment. Don't forget how it was with my heart against your heart. I'm just going to get things ready. I'll quickly return. All I ask is this. Don't change your mind while I'm gone. Then she looked down and for a while said nothing. Then she looked up and for a while said nothing. Then she looked around her and said, this is my home. But when you send for me, DK, I promise I will come. <laughs> Come on.